It's casting a shadow on the SIGs. Check that out. I've got my solar panel wrapped up on itself in a 360 degree bend. This is one of the coolest solar panels I've ever played with. Practically indestructible, incredibly flexible, and incredibly efficient, especially when it comes to partial shading. Got some real world tests coming up for you. You won't want to miss them. Let's unbox this. Some documentation. Impressive that it comes wrapped in this foam stuff. That's very nice. There she is. Check out how thin this thing is. It is not thick at all. There's some specs. 200 watts. VOC is 31.5 volts. Max system voltage is 1000 volts. 10 year warranty on this bad boy. They claim here in the manual that the Yuma 200 200 watt drilled version, uh, which is what I've got, uh, the ones with little holes, only weighs 5.95 pounds. For first testing here, uh, we've got uh, the Anchor Solix C1000 plugged into a Bouge RV 200 watt rigid panel. I don't know if you can see the uh, Bouge RV uh, sticker right there. The rigid panel plugged in right at the moment, and uh, then we're going to compare it to the SIGs in a couple of different uh, scenarios. So with that uh, rigid panel, we're currently inputting 173 watts to that power station in full sunlight. It's high noon, so the sun is pretty much straight overhead, so about uh, the most ideal testing conditions. Cool, somewhat cool day as well. Let's uh, spread the SIGs out across the solar pan this 200 watt panel here and uh, see what it produces. So we've got the 200 watt SIGS panel over the top of the 200 watt panel and I won't shade it with my big shadow. And uh, we've got the cord coming over here going into the Anchor Solix C1000. Coming in the shade where you can see, check it out, 174 watts, 175. So practically identical to the 200 watt rigid panel in full sunlight, which is good because they're both 200 watt panels. All right, let's test some shading. I've placed a trash can here and uh, you can see it's casting a shadow on the SIGs. Check that out, 110 watts. I'll just move that SIGs panel now and uh, keep that trash can right there and we'll shade that other 200 watt panel and see what happens there. So same thing, we've got uh, the trash can right there on that 200 watt panel and check out this difference. Oh, wow. Look at this, measly 14 watts of power. So that pretty much obliterated the output of that panel, even though most of it's still in the sun. 12 watts, 14 watts, right around there. And the SIGs was still giving us over 100 watts. Bonkers. Now we've got uh, two trash cans, both uh, providing good shade on that uh, panel. Let's see what that did. It's pretty much once you get shade on the panel, it it, it nixes it uh, really good. We're down to 11, so that's worse, but uh, not as significant of a drop as that first shadow. All right, let's do the SIGs with the two trash cans now. Got the SIGs in place, double trash can shadow, and uh, I think uh, we've met its uh, match uh, here, uh, but still better performance than the other one, but uh, we're down to 26 watts, so. Heavy, two heavy shadows like that. Even with the rest in sun, uh, the, that does decrease its output substantially. Well, let's try more of a real world, I mean, this is a great test, uh, but let's let's pretend that, uh, let's do a little bit more of a real world scenario here. What about if uh, your panels are laying flat on like an RV's roof and uh, you've parked under some trees and so you're only getting specks of sunlight uh, coming through the trees. You can see we've got uh, a little bit of sun kind of going across them there, uh, but for the most part, uh, they're both in the shade. If anything, this one actually has a little more sun on it than this. Right now the SIGS is plugged into the power station. We're bringing in a whopping 10 watts. <laughs> so obviously, if you're wanting solar power, don't uh, don't park under a tree. Let's uh, plug in uh, the rigid panel and uh, compare performance. This uh, rigid panel has a little bit more uh, intensity of light uh, shining on it uh, down here versus the SIGs, uh, but they're both trading blows. 
So that one is a Vaseline between 10 and 12 watts. So maybe, maybe an extra watt or two compared to the SIGs in this current sunlight condition. So if you're in full shade or close to it, uh, both are going to perform about the same. I think uh, where the SIGs really performs is in partial shade. So we did the trash can experiment. Let's uh, move them uh, up here. And you can see we've got a little bit of uh, full sun. I'm going to put the ends of them in the full sun up there and uh, the other part uh, in the shade and let's see how that compares. Okay, I've tried to get them as close to halfway in the shade and halfway in the sun as possible. When you're dealing with uh, shade from trees, it's hard to uh, get that precise. And that's what we are all about here on this channel, real world tests. This is not a laboratory or anything, we're just seeing, yeah, you park uh, your trailer under some partial shade and uh, what are the results? So again, this is just flat, not optimal angle or anything. The rigid panel is currently connected and uh, it's about the same as when it was in full shade, 11 watts. Let's see what the SIGS does. We've got the SIGS uh, connected up. Very interesting results. It uh, is currently producing nine watts. It's actually worse than the rigid panel. Goes to show, and I'm going to experiment with this next, that uh, potentially, if you've blocked a good chunk of the entire panel going this direction with shade, there is no good way for the power to bypass without going through cells that have been impacted by the shade. So next test, what I'm going to do is flip these, go horizontally up here, and have a piece in the shade, a part of the panel in the shade, a part of the panel in the sun, and we're going to see how that impacts things and performance. This is obviously the SIGS panel. You can see we're heavily shaded in this corner. We've got a little piece of shade coming up and almost to the top right there, not quite. Same with this, so hopefully power can bypass across the top. Down here, we're in pretty good sun, but we do have shade along the bottom edge still. So partially shaded. Look at the impact that's had. 55, 53 watts. All right, let's try the rigid panel, see how that performs. Okay, we got the rigid panel here, and uh, I've tried to keep that top row of cells in full sun. I have a piece of shade coming up uh, right in here, and uh, this bottom uh, piece is pretty much in full shade except for right here. So I tried to get it to as close to where the SIGS was as before. You can see a massive difference now. That one's only producing 16 watts where the SIGS is producing over 50. And then just for the heck of it, we've got the overhang of the house creating a very sharp shadow right there. So uh, half the panel is in the sun, half the panel is in the shade. This is obviously the rigid panel and uh, we're pulling in about uh, 11 watts. And the SIGS and uh, unfortunately I had shadow creeping in here. So I had to go up a little bit, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we've got about half and half uh, once again here. This is uh, producing 67 watts, so huge, huge difference. So what have we learned? Well, this is very good at partial shading. So long as there's a way for the power to get around the shade, so to speak. So long as there's a piece uh, of the panel running the length that's uh, pretty much in full sun, you'll be able to get substantially more power than the standard power panel uh, would provide. If you've got shade that's just solid all the way across uh, the short way here, uh, it has a little bit more of a challenge because there's no pathway around it in full sun. I don't know if that makes sense. That's what I'm observing here uh, with these tests. And just uh, for fun, I was curious to see if I shaded the end that does not have the plugs, but uh, left the side uh, with the plugs in full sun, you know, would it just basically activate that piece of the panel and uh, let this be null and void because all the power can be generated and flow that way uh, right into the charge controller? The answer is no. Um, similar results, no matter where the panel was shaded all the way across this direction, we're only getting about 12 watts input. And then of course, this is something that uh, your average solar panel can most certainly not do, and that is bend 
like this and it can go 360 degrees piece of cake no sweat so obviously odd shapes that uh, you need uh, panels to conform to this sig's uh, stuff is the way to go and hey look at that even uh, with it uh, folded up and at uh, a vertical orientation we're getting 25 watts. So what are my final thoughts on this SIGS 200 watt flexible solar panel? Well, I think this is really where the technology needs to go. If we can get more efficiency in any scenario when it comes to shading in just a panel without adding optimizers or anything like that, that would help tremendously. So I'm really liking where this technology is headed. Is it for the masses yet? I don't think so. Not uh, with the current pricing. Uh, I think it's a little uh, expensive for your average solar panel array. What would this be good for? Well, if you're someone that uh, especially is on the go, whether it's RV or some kind of camper van or something like that, you want it to be really low profile, super easy to install without heavy racking and stuff. Obviously, weight is a tremendous uh, reduction on this versus a rigid panel, much more stealthy, you know, if you're trying to be kind of in a stealth van uh, situation and uh, you want some solar on the roof, but uh, you don't want people to be able to see it from the ground. If your van is tall enough, you know, throw some of these on the roof and uh, no one will be able to see. If you have any odd shapes or contours you need to conform to, the flexibility of these panels cannot be beat. I love the uh, two mounting options with the adhesive or like mine, the uh, little grommets and as you saw you know the partial shading performance is out of this world standard panels just can't compete the other thing i'd say is if you're someone that uses portable power stations a lot like i do and maybe you don't have an rv or anything but uh, you go tent camping uh, frequently and uh, you want to take uh, panels with you and maybe you've been using the folding portable panels i have had terrible uh, success with folding portable panels. While the panels themselves tend to work uh, out pretty good, where they fold is a problem. I'll show you uh, a snippet here uh, of a video I filmed earlier of one of my folding panels that uh, completely burnt out. Here's uh, one of these flexible um, portable panels. And while they're nice from the standpoint that they fold up, this panel is only about three years old been used very lightly occasional camping trips maybe been used five times camping and uh, anyway it's toast now if you look at this right here that is melted right there and uh, if i flip it over here you can see uh, the melt mark on this side as well this panel uh, does not generate uh, any electricity anymore and it is out of warranty and it's incredibly expensive <laughs> to buy this. To have something like this that uh, packs a punch with power, that's very light, can easily you know slip between seats, you can even roll it up, put it on top of stuff. It's rated to be outside in the weather, like rain and stuff like that. Whereas like the folding solar panels, a lot of them are not rated to be out in the rain. So you're constantly worrying if uh, your panel is going to get wet or whatever. This you can just deploy and forget about it. So I'm super excited and that's how I'm going to be using this uh, myself on the go uh, when I go car camping. But tell me what uh, you guys think. Sound off in the comments. I love hearing from you. I always say the smartest people in the world are in the comments section. <laughs> And uh, I just uh, love to hear uh, the contributions you have to share. What have you used this panel for? If you use it, what do you foresee being able to use this panel for? Where do you think it would uh, excel? Where do you think it wouldn't uh, excel? Uh, all those things I want to hear. If you like these kinds of real world testing, please don't forget to give us a like and consider subscribing. Uh, that's what we're all about here is uh, putting things to the test and uh, see if the claims are true, giving you our honest thoughts and feedback. As I use this, I'll be sure and let you know if I have any issues down the road in terms of uh, it functioning or dying. And special thanks uh, for Bouge RV sending this out. They did send it to me for free for testing and review purposes, but uh, that's all they did. I'm not uh, receiving uh, compensation or having them uh, guide anything that uh, I get to say or do in this video. All right, we'll catch y'all next time.